Hey everyone, Neil here, coming back with another episode of Minecraft modding. Um, this is my second time doing this video because last time I did it, my mic wasn't working. So I recorded about 35 minutes of, you know, absolute bullshit and it didn't come out, but that's okay. I think I figured it out. It's working. Um, we're going to work some more on our block class. This episode is brought to you by me and uh, Pyramid Outburst Imperial IPA. So there you go. I'm going to turn around and uh, enter my super user password onto my laptop because I'm trying to update my Linux build right now. So, uno momento. Done. All right. Let's look at this block class. So, we got quite a bit done on this. Um, we did the default facing and all of that. So, we have quite a few more things to do at this point. Um, what is that going to be? So, let's get into states at this point. Because we're going to need to do that to make sure that our uh, block properly registers. But, um, before we do that, let's get in and do um, our JSON files and get those taken care of. So we'll do our block state first and um, we have those here. So we'll go into our vanilla assets and we're just going to grab um, our block states out of here. There's actually two of them because this is a furnace. So we're going to have our furnace JSON. Maybe. That's cool. And we're also going to have our lit furnace. Both of these. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to say mod ID granite oven idle. We're going to grab this whole bit right here and we're going to paste this in and then we're going to save that as and we're going to come back here to our development, our source, our main resources, assets, mod ID, block states and we're going to save this as granite oven idle. It already exists. Of course it does because it's in development. We want to put that in production. Uh, I did this before in the video that you'll never see because there's no audio. I suppose I could put it up and you could watch it. I won't. Uh, I'm just going to do this and we will say granite oven active. We're actually going to change that and put our mod ID, replace all. That function is control H, by the way, in Sublime Text, since I am seem to always be plugging them. Production, source, main, resources, assets, mod ID, block states. <coughs> Gr granite. Granite. Uh, Christ on a cracker. Granite oven active. Cool. So we have both of our block states in there. Let's jump in here and we will do our block models. And again, it's kind of the same thing. We are going to have a furnace. 
and we're going to have a lit furnace. I got some fucking asshole behind me recording a video for his Call of Duty channel trying to plug me right now on his channel. So, you know what? Fuck him. We're not even going to acknowledge him. Um, textures and G. Put our mod ID in each of these. Lowercase. I'm not being a hater. And um, these are our textures for our block models. So I have already created those as per usual. Um, so I will copy and paste them. There's actually four textures that go in here. Um, they are already there. So we have the sides, we have the top of the block, and then we have the active state, and then we have the idle state. So really when we're looking at this, right, this is the oven off or in its idle state, this is the oven on in its active state. And I really just ripped those off from the regular uh, vanilla textures. So um, our top um, that we can see over here, right, is going to be granite oven top. This is the idle state. So this will be granite oven off. Nope. Granite oven front off. And this will be granite oven side. Just like so. We are going to save as. We will go into production. Resources assets. Um, this is a model. <coughs> block model. And this will be granite oven idle because we have our front off. I'm actually just going to copy pasta, we'll paste this in, and we'll change this to on. And we are going to save as production source main resources assets. Models, block, um, granite, oven, active, like so. Cool. Um, we need item models. So we will come in here to our item models, and we are going to find furnace, and to open up again we are going to find lit furnace not pumpkin lit furnace like so um, we're going to put in our mod ID this is not a furnace this is our granite oven idle this will be let's just steal this bit right here. And we will do active like so. And we'll save both of these. Like so. Item models. Granite oven active. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy that. We're going to save that. And then we'll do a save as. Paste that in. There we go. Granite oven idle. Cool. All right. So we've done our block states, we've done our textures, we've done our block models, we've done our item models. That's pretty much good at this point. Um, I have not, or have I, 
I've edited these out. And I'm pretty sure because we haven't worked out our states, these are going to give us some errors. And we're going to come into yep, block state implementation. Right there. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So let's work on our states. So um, we'll leave that for right now. Um, it's going to give us errors. We're not going to be able to launch our mod, but that's OK. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here below our tile entity and we are going to say public static void set state <coughs> and in this we are going to have a boolean which is going to be active we're going to have our world which will be world and we're going to have our block position which will be pause like so Okay, so there's some things that we need to gather first. And the first one is going to be our block state, like so. And we're just going to call this uh, state. Easy. Um, and it's going to be world.get block state. That's going to be pause. We are going to have our tile entity, which will be tile. And this will be world dot um, get tile entity, and again it's going to be pause for our block position. Um, the next thing is up here we declared a variable, variable uh, true or false, keep inventory, and what we're going to say is keep inventory is going to be equal to true. Right. This essentially makes sure that when the state of the block, when it switches from not cooking to cooking, that it keeps its inventory, right? However, when we dig it up, <laughs> right, when we mine that block, we want to make sure that that happens to be false, and that way it drops uh, the, uh, the items out. When it's going from cooking to not cooking, we want to keep our inventory. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an if statement we're going to say if active world dot set block state um, we're going to want our position we are going to want our block state which is going to be ng blocks dot granite of an idle dot get default state dot with property the property is going to be facing which we already did up above our value is going to be state dot get value and this will be facing as well um, we're going to go over two spaces past those two parentheticals and we're going to put in a comma three. And we're going to close that up. Do we have any errors? We do not have any errors. We're good. So um, we are going to say else world dot set block state. Again, this will be pause. This will be ng blocks dot granite oven idle. Nope, this one up here needs to be active because if it's active, it's active. This one will be idle dot get default state. Uh, 
with property facing state dot get value facing over two comma three just like so um, you know what? let's do this let's move this down um, open closed I need an open there I need a close here okay um, we're going to say keep inventory is going to be equal to false and then we need to do something with our tile so if our um, if our tile is not equal to null so if it has something we're going to say tile dot validate and we are going to say world dot set tile entity is going to be our position in tile just like so so that takes care of our states I just want to see let's let's fire it up and see what happens I'm, I'm pretty sure that we're missing a method or two at this point but I want to try it and see what happens yeah it crashed and still with the block state that's okay that's okay um, so um, you know what let's do one last thing before I wrap this up and start the next one let's get our particles in there so we're going to jump into our forge source file we're going to go to net.minecraft.block we're going to go to block furnace like so and in here I'm just going to copy paste this and the reason why I'm doing this is because this is just going to emulate a normal furnace so we're going to copy this method out and really what this does is it causes the smoke and the flame particles to show up in front of the block while we're doing it. Um, let's go ahead and actually put this right below our default facing method. And we'll just actually paste that in. There we go. And we will save that and um, We'll run back over here to our ng blocks class. Let's just go ahead and comment these out. Um, so in that way, and we'll save it. So in that way, we can still run our mod. We can still go and run around and do other things, and it's not going to give us any grief. While we continue on with this series. We still have a lot of work to do on our block class and then we have to do our GUI, our container, our tile entity, our recipes. Yeah. All right. So um, that is uh, block class part two for our custom furnace. Lots of love. Give me a like. Give me a comment if you need help. Give me a subscribe. Check out the links below. All that. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Uh. I'm busy. I'll come back. Episode 3. I'll see you then. And I'm out.